Chapter Five of Pollyanna. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Mary Anderson. Pollyanna by Eleanor H. Porter. Chapter Five: The Game. For the land's sake, Miss Pollyanna. What a scare you did give me! panted Nancy, hurrying up to the big rock, down which Pollyanna had just regretfully slid. Scare? Oh, I'm so sorry. But you mustn't really ever get scared about me, Nancy. Father and the ladies aid used to do it too, till they found I always came back all right. But I didn't even know you'd went, cried Nancy, tucking the little girl's hand under her arm. And hurrying her down the hill. I didn't see you go, and nobody didn't. I guess you flew right up through the roof. I do, I do. Pollyanna skipped gleefully. I did most, only I flew down instead of up. I came down the tree. Nancy stopped short. You did what? Came down the tree outside my window. My stars and stockings gasped Nancy, hurrying on again. I'd like to know what your aunt would say to that. Would you? Well, I'll tell her then, so you can find out. Promised the little girl cheerfully. Mercy! Gasped Nancy. No, no. Why, you don't mean she'd care? Cried Pollyanna, plainly disturbed. No, er, yes. Well, never mind. I. I ain't so very particular about knowing what she'd say. Truly, stammered Nancy, determined to keep one scolding from Pollyanna, if nothing more. But say, we'd better hurry. I've got to get them dishes done, you know. I'll help, promised Pollyanna promptly. Oh, Miss Pollyanna, demurred Nancy. For a moment there was silence. The sky was darkening fast. Pollyanna took a firmer hold of her friend's arm. I reckon I'm glad after all that you did get scared a little, 'cause then you came after me. She shivered. Poor little lamb, and you must be hungry too. I'm, I'm afraid you'll have to have bread and milk in the kitchen with me. Your aunt didn't like it because you didn't come down to supper, you know. But I couldn't. I was up here. Yes, but she didn't know that. You see, observed Nancy dryly, stifling a chuckle. I'm sorry about the bread and milk. I am. I am. Oh, I'm not. I'm glad. Glad? Why? Why? I like bread and milk, and I'd like to eat with you. I don't see any trouble about being glad about that. You don't seem to see any trouble being glad about everything," retorted Nancy. Choking a little over her remembrance of Pollyanna's brave attempts to like the bare little attic room, Pollyanna laughed softly. Well, that's the game, you know. Anyway, the game, yes, the just being glad game. Whatever in the world are you talking about? Why, it's a game. Father told it to me, and it's lovely. Rejoined Pollyanna. We've played it always. Ever since I was a little little girl, I told the ladies' aid, and they played it. Some of them. What is it? I ain't much on games, though. Pollyanna laughed again, but she sighed too, and in the gathering twilight, her face looked thin and wistful. Why, we began it on some crutches that came in a missionary barrel. Crutches? Yes. You see, I'd wanted a doll. And father had written them so, but when the barrel came, the lady wrote that there hadn't any dolls come in, but the little crutches had, so she sent 'em along as they might come in handy for some child some time, and that's when we began it. Well, I must say I can't see any game about that about that," declared Nancy almost irritably. Oh yes, the game was to just find something about everything to be glad about. No matter what 'twas," rejoined Pollyanna earnestly, "and we began right then on the crutches. Well, goodness me, 
I can't see anything ter be glad about, getting a pair of crutches when you wanted a doll. Pollyanna clapped her hands. There is, there is, she crowed. But I couldn't see it either, Nancy, at first, she added, with quick honesty. Father had to tell it to me. Well, then suppose you tell me, almost snapped Nancy. Goosey, why, just be glad, because you don't need them, exulted Pollyanna triumphantly. You see, it's just as easy when you know how. Well, of all the queer doings, breathed Nancy, regarding Pollyanna with almost fearful eyes. Oh, but it isn't queer. It's lovely, maintained Pollyanna, enthusiastically. And we've played it ever since. And the harder tis, the more fun tis to get em out. Only, only sometimes it's almost too hard, like when your father goes to heaven, and there isn't anybody but a lady's aid left. Yes, or when you're put in a snippy little room, way at the top of the house with nothing in it, growled Nancy. Pollyanna sighed. That was a hard one at first, she admitted, especially when I was so kind of lonesome. I just didn't feel like playing the game anyway, and I had been wanting pretty things so. Then I happened to think how I hated to see my freckles in the looking glass, and I saw that lovely picture out the window, too. So then I knew I'd found the things to be glad about. You see, when you're hunting for the glad things, you sort of forget the other kind, like the doll you wanted, you know. Humph! choked Nancy, trying to swallow the lump in her throat. Most generally it doesn't take so long, sighed Pollyanna. And lots of times, now I just think of them without thinking, you know. I've got so used to playing it. It's a lovely game. F Father and I used to like it so much, she faltered. I suppose, though, it, it'll it be a little harder now, as long as I haven't anybody to play it with. Maybe Aunt Polly will play it, though, she added as an afterthought. My stars and stockings, her? breathed Nancy behind her teeth. Then aloud she said doggedly, See here, Miss Pollyanna. I ain't saying that I'll play it very well, and I ain't saying that I know how, anyway, but I'll play it with ye after a fashion. I just will, I will. Oh, Nancy, exulted Pollyanna, giving her a rapturous hug. That'll be splendid. Won't we have fun? Er, maybe, conceded Nancy, in open doubt. But you mustn't count too much on me, you know. I never was no case for games. But I'm a goin' ter make a most awful old try on this one. You're going ter have someone ter play it with, anyhow, she finished, as they entered the kitchen together. Pollyanna ate her bread and milk with good appetite. Then, at Nancy's suggestion, she went into the sitting room, where her aunt sat reading. Miss Polly looked up coldly. Have you had your supper, Pollyanna? Yes, Aunt Polly. I am very sorry, Pollyanna, to have been obliged so soon to send you into the kitchen to eat bread and milk. But I was real glad you did it, Aunt Polly. I like bread and milk, and Nancy, too. You mustn't feel bad about that one bit. Aunt Polly sat suddenly a little more erect in her chair. Pollyanna, it's quite time you were in bed. You have had a hard day. And tomorrow we must plan your hours, and go over your clothing to see what it is necessary to get for you. Nancy will give you a candle. Be careful how you handle it. Breakfast will be at half past seven. See that you are down to that. Good night. Quite as a matter of course, Pollyanna came straight to her aunt's side and gave her an affectionate hug. I've had such a beautiful time so far, she sighed happily. I know I'm going to just love living with you, but then I knew I should before I came. Good night, she called cheerfully as she ran from the room. Well, upon my soul, ejaculated Miss Polly half aloud, what a most extraordinary child. Then she frowned. She's glad I punished her, and I mustn't feel bad one bit. And she's going to love to live with me? 
"'Well, upon my soul!' ejaculated Miss Polly again, as she took up her book. Fifteen minutes later, in the attic room, a lonely little girl sobbed into the tightly clutched sheet. "'I know, Father, among the angels, I'm not playing the game one bit now, not one bit. But I don't believe even you could find anything to be glad about, sleeping all alone, way off up here in the dark, like this.' If only I was near Nancy or Aunt Polly, or even a lady's aiders, it would be easier. Downstairs in the kitchen, Nancy, hurrying with her belated work, jabbed her dish mop into the milk pitcher, and muttered jerkily, If playing a silly fool game about being glad you've got crutches when you want dolls is going to be my way of being the rock of refuge, why, I'm a-going to play it, I am, I am. End of chapter 5